Good afternoon. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting on January 23rd, 2019 at 5 p.m. in the town offices. The agenda tonight will be uh, to, uh, to review any minutes from previous meetings if we have them, review the mail, take public comment, and then we have a, a public hearing for a site plan uh, from Mass RE12 LLC, uh, uh, locate a, a solar project on 100 Railroad Yard Road. Uh, then we'll uh, do some final uh, sign final approval documentation on a photovoltaic facility off of Set Right Road that was approved at a previous meeting. We'll take up any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting, which we actually already have, and then we'll adjourn. Anything else on the agenda? So, do we have minutes to any? No. We, no did, minutes. we did a lot of minutes the last meeting, so we're just one behind, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mail? I'm going through it now. John's going through that. If there's anything that we need to know about, you'll let us know before the end of the meeting? Absolutely. Um, public comment. Is there anything anybody has uh, to say that's not on the meeting, uh, that's not on the agenda tonight from the public? Seeing nothing, I'll... Uh, this is fantastic. Let's uh, just go down the line and say who from the planning board is, uh, is present. John, you want to start? Yeah, John Baronis. Rachel Blaine. John Wait. Kip Camosa. Paul Ellis. Max Antis. So we have six out of our seven members, which thank you for, for all being here. This is a special uh, day and time. Um, it's not my birthday. <laughs> it is? It's not my birthday. Oh. So it's not that special. It's not that special. It's, it's, it's relatively special. But, uh, so um, let's start with the uh, public hearing, which I will uh, read. So we're going to open a public hearing for a site plan review for Mass RE12 LLC in accordance with Deerfield Zoning Bylaw, Chapter 179, Article 3. Uh, Section 5400, Site Plan Review. A hearing will be held on the proposed project uh, involving construction of a 20-acre portion of the existing Deerfield Railroad property at 100 Railroad Yard Road, which is on Assessor's Map 7, Lot 5, on property owned by Pan Am Southern, LLC. The proposed use for this site is to install solar panels that will generate approximately 2.5 megawatts of direct current electricity. Uh, the project has received use and setback variances from the Zoning Board of Appeals at uh, previous meetings. And all the plans have been at the Town Hall uh, for the past more than two weeks and uh, proper notice was sent out to Abutters and in the newspaper, uh, according to our bylaws, for public to review. So, if our proponents, we, uh, just to remind people that we've talked about this project before and then at the last uh, few weeks ago, we realized that it needed to sort of come as a, as a formal reapplication, and now it's just a site plan that, um, that we'll be looking at tonight, and we have received uh, correspondences, communications from abutters and, and, um, and the property owner that we can read tonight, but if the um, applicants want to give us a two or three minute summary just to get us up to speed, that would be great. So if you guys just maybe just introduce yourselves. And, uh, yep, Kyle Purdy, ERM. Sure. Uh, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson, here on behalf of the applicant. Matt Nori, I'm with Urban Green Technologies. And John Urbinski, a consultant with the RM. So first, thank you very much for having this special meeting. Um, first and foremost, we have our public notifications and the return receipts to all abutters. So in front of you, um, we have three documents. We have our uh, site plan application, as well as a petition from abutters and residents in favor of the project. Um, and then we also have our correspondence summarizing our variances that were approved with the ZBA. Um, and then also we, when we had our presentation back in the beginning of December, um, we have formalized that presentation and put it in a PowerPoint and that PowerPoint was presented to the ZBA, but I wanted to make sure the planning board also had a copy for theirs, so there's the copy of the PowerPoint as well, speaking to all the different resources in the area and comments that have come out through all these meetings. Um, but with that said, uh, 
you know, certainly we don't want to talk too much at length here. Um, but if you have any other questions we can help answer about the project, um, we're willing to take them. Well, we do want to see the plans. Who has the plans? These, um, everybody has had these and looked at if they have. But um, I do, I do, seems like at the last meeting we had our roll of plans. I don't know. And I asked yeah, the big date. Handed them out last week. Yeah, so a bunch of us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's Slime another one. Yeah. That's Will these be the exact plans verbatim to the ones that we looked at prior to mm -hmm. uh, the last vote? You know, back in, I think it was December. I think the additional, some of the screening, some of the weapons were slightly reduced. Okay. And, uh, so that's what we want to do. But we do need to have in front of us plans if we're going to make a decision to make. So, um, is there a tripod around here, John, that I could set up for them? An easel? See, Wendy's right there. Is that one right there? Hey, that's why we're doing this part. Yeah, I guess you know. And you know what? There's another, I bet you there's another box in um, the planning office. Thanks for calling. We'll look for that. So, essentially, you have one over here. Yes, well, the advice column has a way to be a setback. Vehicle access, some construction activities. There's some question about noise. You look at that. I think Matt presented something to the ZBA that handles the crap. Do you want to give them this? We gave them this. Can you find it? No, no, no. Yeah, same to all of us. And you got to do it in the microphone. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to just take a look you uh, The application uh, doesn't say the amount of area disturbed, area of disturbed land, which is what we base our fees oh. on. Um, yes, actually, um, actually, in the um, PowerPoint, the, um, you have that. If you were to look to... Um, Page one, two, three, four. Page four, and then also page um, six as well. I guess it would be sl technically slide four. There's one called North Array, and then one called South Array. And you're referring to this? Um, this is actually in this um, the handout of the yeah. PowerPoint. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So did you follow that? Yes. Three and a half acres. And so yes, if you do see, so even though we did mention um, 20 acres, that is what we're leasing from Pan Am per the lease agreement. However, the size, the acreage of the projects themselves, um, the North Ray is 5.5 acres, the South Ray is five acres, and then the actual clearing acreage that we have, and solar panel acreage, as you can see um, right there, solar panel acreage, about three areas, which is what's gonna be developed ultimately. And but then, the um, solar panel acreage is only three acres on the north, and and then three and a three and, and a half, half on the on the south. That, that's correct. That's correct. Right, 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 right. So, no, so the the land in between the strip of land in between the north and the south, I guess that's, that's the way it goes. That's that. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to cut you off, but no, that, that is um that's residential. And then there's a very see where the, that tree line is. That's yeah. a very narrow strip that's owned by Pan Am, and that we are not disturbing at all. Those trees are not going to be cut, not be trimmed. That's going to remain in place as is. So we need a square footage, um, and as, as I don't know if, if you know, in our bylaws we have a, a, a fee per square foot, but then we max it out at three thousand um, dollars because otherwise some of these, in particular, the solar projects become very expensive. 
So, um, so I'd suspect that that's probably where you're going to end up. And is that based on the solar panel acreage? It's basically every, okay. the whole thing is disturbed because you're going to be walking on it and moving around mm -hmm. on it. So it's, at first we said, is it just where you put your poles? Right. And no, it's the whole place, you, whether okay. trucks driving on it, people okay. walking on so it. So if we have 10.5 acres, when we look at this, it seems like 10.5 acres total between the two yeah. multiplied by 43, right. 560 gets us to the total square footage. And mm -hmm. that times $10? Mm, I think it used to be. Yeah. Or is it is $100 per thousand? I get, we got to go back and look at it. So let's mm -hmm. do that calculation. And um, but the most it'll be is $3,000, and okay. then then the 250, which I'm looking to see, and it doesn't say that that was you just submitted application fees. Is that what you're? Yeah, looking that for? that was submitted with um, the payment for public notice. So that 250 was paid for. All right, so I, I'm looking at a bunch of stamped ones. I don't see that, but we'll, we'll find that. Anyway. And it should have accompanied by a transmittal letter. Because Priscilla had asked that. Is that? See, a couple different files here. So I got one that was presented to me today. All right, so those are just things, administrative things, but all right. All right, so sorry, so can you just go over again where, where the panels are and maybe tell us the changes from the, from the earlier version? Yeah, so um, Northern Array, Southern Array, um, since our meeting in early December when we met with the ZBA, um, we requested a 50-foot setback from the frontage. They um, issued a 75-foot setback. So with that, the array got moved back about six, seven feet in the front in the northern array. In the southern array, it's actually about 80 feet to the first panel, so that didn't change at all. Um, also, I believe since the meeting in December, there is the one wetland area in this corner. We have pulled panels away from the buffer zone to minimize that buffer zone impact as well. Um, but that, that's all that's changed since and, and, and the addition of the arbor lighting to the front, the side, um, and the rear as well. And also, just a, just a comment uh, at the with the ZBA variance, we were also um, they limited the project to a 2.5 megawatts DC, 1.98 AC. Just to reiterate that again. So it is it's under uh, two AC, but um, but it's more than 10 acres, so it still is the extra large. Mm -hmm. That's correct. <coughs> All right, here's, let's see the check. Okay. All right, any uh, questions about the plan? I, I can read a few correspondences that have come in. So we were sent uh, to the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals and Planning Board, and this is from a Butters and neighbors living on River Road and are asking the ZBA to grant the two zoning variances that ERM is requesting of its solar project off of the road, and they say they support this project. Um, just to summarize, they feel like, because that was one of the issues, was the noise was one of the things that we had talked about before, and um, they, be they believe that uh, there is some tree cutting that goes on, but the neighborhood um, realizes that any project up there could cut these trees, and they, uh, they like the fact that there's going to be the arborvitae screening, which will be good for both visual screening and sound buffer. Um, uh, we talk about decommissioning, which we do with all of them. Um, and they have agreed, I guess the lighting is the other thing. What's, what's, what have you done with the, I mean, it's not going to be lit up, right? No, it's, it's not going to be lit up. There were some um, concerns with some of the lighting that's in the Pan Am rail yard as well. I mean, I've spoken to Pan Am about what they can do. Um, Pan Am, I mean, they're, they're trying to upgrade actually their lighting system to be more LEDs and directional. Um, but I mean, however, like I said, I can't speak on behalf of Pan Am. I have reached out to ask them about that, though, um, with any lighting. That could be, but there's going to be no lighting around the solar project, um, nothing of that nature that would disturb at night. At night. At night. Oh, that would disturb at night. Sorry, sorry. No, there's no. Yeah. 
So I count about 35 signatures, but it looks like mostly River Road residents um, that have signed this, uh, this letter. And then we received another letter from, um, from the railroad. Do yeah. we have that? We don't have that. I don't know. There's not a letter here. No. We do, that, we do summarize the letter in the PowerPoint packet. Um, I know it's a quick summary. I apologize. It's not the full letter. I know we did send that in a couple days ago. All right, buddy. We don't get an email to us. Did anybody? All right, but anyway, they're the, they're the, uh, they're the uh, property owners. Good. Anybody from the public that has uh, questions or comments? Yes, sir, if you want to just come up to the mic and yes. tell us who you are and uh, where you live and comment. Uh, Steve Assing, 795 River Road. Uh, just a quick comment on the lights that you brought up. The lights were in concern were in the, the portion of the, the project that the trees weren't going to get disturbed. So the lights that were in question were back in here. So the concern was that when the trees were cut down, that the lights would be exposed more. And, it, and it's been proven to not be that. So they're Excellent. good with the lights. Okay. So there was more matter, not of ex more lights, but of the lights, the existing lights. Right. And how they were. Received. Right. And actually, they were going to talk to uh, the railroad about maybe shading those a little bit, right. tipping right. them down. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Hi, Lynn. Rose, McCollin Farm Road, Deerfield, 01342. I support the project. So it's more a question about um, how the sound study works, because we hadn't done one on the planning board. So just a, a question about, uh, I know you were still researching, um, and you know, part of the issue is we feel like this would have the least amount of sound, like not trucks coming in once it's constructed. I just like, my question has always been, will it magnify, like all the metal will it magnify? We talked about the angle of the, of the panels, you know, to the sound of the, um, I guess the, where they, the big problem, I, we haven't talked about it so much here, where the couple is up high. i just curious, you know, one, if you were doing some research, if you found out any more, but, so in terms of a process question, if you have a sound study and we find that there is some magnified sound, if, you know, hopefully there's not, um, is there a way to address that, like, after the fact? I mean, is there, any room in there to deal with things once they're constructed. So, because I know you're still doing research, mm -hmm. so that's just a, a question. Yeah, no, I've um, looked at and trying to provide some research too as the purpose of solar panels being used as somewhat of a noise barrier. Um, and that's why, that's one of the reasons why we did propose the arborvitae along the back row as well of the project um, to try to help address some of those concerns with the sound. And also with that northern array, because a lot of that is already, is cleared. So this would be adding in to help um, to help to create somewhat of a barrier too. Um, that's why that would I know that would definitely help. And with the you mentioned the angle of the panels and how they are, essentially how the panels will be facing south, um, where the noise would be coming in to help bounce back off of the panels. I know I'm not the expert, but I'm just going off of what I've researched myself as well. Um, and I do have some other information I could pass along as well too. Um, I had to print out a few things too that I could help with. Yeah. So I think it's a two-part question: is like what have you learned since we last talked, and then mm -hmm. you know. Is there a process moving forward once everything's built? If there's, if the neighborhood does have a concern, where we could dialogue and there's some mitigation options. So I just don't know. Once it's built and that's it and it's over, if there's any way the community can come back and say, you know, here's what's happening. No, I, yeah, I understand. And that's and that's why we tried to reach out and propose a solution with that arbor vitae and help. Like I said, with that, I mean, with the sound, it's hard because we, not necessarily sure. Like, would or would not, and like, that's why it's it's something we want to propose a solution that at least would help um, benefit with, like you said, with the arbor vitae, and also, like you said, is what else could be in place there too. Um, you know, the trucking terminal, of course, that would be more and closer to the proximity of all the residents. Um, so that's why we wanted to try to come to a solution that would work with everyone. Yeah. 
Right. So you're. I just want to understand. So you're saying there's no, once it's built and everything. So, so there's a sound study. Is there a sound study? This, no. No. Oh, I thought there was going to be a sound study. Okay, because you're saying this is new and you're looking at research. So. No so. Well, Sorry. So if I could, maybe. Yeah. It's you that's making that. Is that me? <laughs> Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. Switch. No, it's all right. So I think we just want to talk about a couple of different pieces here because I think Matt's point is how the panels can act as sound mitigation from what exists currently on the site or more so beyond the site. So I think that's the first piece. And the second piece is how is the site designed not only in consideration of what exists beyond the site and how can they act as barriers, but how have we designed the site to make sure that the site in and of itself that's does right. not cause amplify. amplify and does not cause sound itself because inverters that's the part of the solar system here um, that makes that noise so maybe Kyle you want to talk about yeah. the inverters so a little bit certainly just to preface that too um, the area where most of the connections occur is this area right here and this green hatching here was um, existing forested areas that will not be touched by the proposed project so we will maintain that tree line that will help reduce the sound and keep the existing conditions as is. Mm -hmm. um, and then to speak to the solar panels, this is directly south, so the panels are tilted southward, so any noise or light would be hitting the back of the panels, and we hope that that direction to hit the back of the panels would lessen the sound as well. <coughs> um, as Matt already said too, this area is uh, previously cleared, so we don't anticipate any amplified conditions. Um, and these these panels are fixed. Is that correct? That's and correct. That's yes, that's correct. They're going to be yeah. fixed. fixed and up. Then, we had uh, one that was that was right. tracking was tracking in one axis. So that's and we are not. I wasn't sure. And certainly the panels themselves don't make any noise. Um, but there was a comment in an earlier presentation about the inverters. The inverters are located in the back corner of the site, so they're not in the back corner. Um, so they're away from the abutters and residents. Maybe what Lynn is asking, if I could, is that I, I think um, what recourse do yes. the neighbors have in the unfortunate and unlikely event that this array actually makes things worse? They are already contending with noise, as you've said, um, from their existing neighbor, the railroad, and that's not going anywhere, but they don't want to get in a position where suddenly they're finding out that it's worse. And I, I, I think we can all agree we don't know. And so we can't ask you to do anything that we don't know, and it feels like you're, you're amenable, but maybe there is a point at which we need to step in and uh, make some sort of a checkpoint, you know, a checkup, or what is that called? Why not just include it in the construction plan that there's going to be a wall built along the southern field that's comparable or equal to uh, other sound barriers that have been installed in right. other areas? Um, along rail lines. Arborvitis isn't a solution not for quite rail noise. Right. The southern array actually has a 20 to 25 foot raise in elevation. So as far as building a wall in the southern array, I think the change in elevation is already a sound barrier, a mitigation barrier as is. But the northern, the northern array, is, array has that option. Opportunity. Yeah. Can I just clarify one where the noise comes from? The noise comes from the, me, the classification yard right here. This is where the railroad puts the trains together. Mm -hmm. It's not the main line track that causes the noise. It's when the two cars go bang, bang, bang. Right, right, right. So this is what's called a hump, and that's where they do the classification. Mm -hmm. So this area is not going to change. So the noise gets generated here is basically going to be essentially the same. There's no, no change in conditions here. There's a change in conditions here with everybody, and mm -hmm. a change in conditions here with everybody. So I understand your question, Rich, but I don't think there's an easy answer. We're basically keeping the situation as it is now, but putting additional uh, screening here and additional screening there. Mm -hmm. I guess, well, we have a, yeah, so, so if I could add to that too, that was, that was part of the conditions they added was, was the arborvitaes. And the, the neighbors had agreed we, we, that that would suffice for us for, for sound mitigation. So the sound study was, was dropped from that after they agreed to do that, because this wasn't all here when they, when they first started this project. There was no arborvitaes. 
Um, we didn't understand the angle of how the, the panels were going to be. Um, and, and as you said, the one they're facing south and noise coming in will, could, could reflect down. But on the other hand, also with noise coming from the other way, it'll, it would reflect up. It's not like these are just flat panels and they're, they're shooting sound out to the sides. So that's, that's my theory of it anyway. But. Right. But that, that was part of the Ar arborvitaes were part of why we said, well, we don't really need to have the sound study now because they're going to do something about it. Yeah. Thanks. We have another neighbor. Um, my name is Ava Gibbs. I live at 617 River Road. Um, my husband, Steve Anderson, and I um, gathered most of the signatures of those 35 signatures, and we did them you know, door to door, actually talking to people. It took quite a few days. <laughs> and to the best of my knowledge, I could be wrong, but to the best of my knowledge, nobody except Lynn worried about the sound. Even Bruce Blanchard, who lives closest to it, was not worried about it. <clears throat> I don't think he's here. I thought he would come, but anyway. Um, so I just want to say that we asked, we talked, we really wanted to get a consensus in our neighborhood. And um, as, as the petition says, we would like to see this. Nothing is perfect. You know, we personally don't think it's going to make the, I, I hear it at night. I'm sure I don't hear it as much as Lynn, but I hear it. And you know, I've learned to live with it. And we bought a house, we, we bought it knowing that the railroad is there. I think this is an important point that, you know, the railroad was there before anybody. <clears throat> it's like, that's what is. So, um, just, I guess I'm confirming what um, the petition says. I hope that this won't derail it. Um, <laughs> we've given up, we've give, we gave up on the sound study because we realized a lot, of, a lot of other factors. The most important one being you know, all things being equal, this was the best possible um, development in our neighborhood, which is very threatened. The railroad will put anything in. They don't care, you know, as long as it makes <coughs> money. We care. So I'm hoping that this does not derail your vote. That's why we got those 35 signatures. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sarah. Yes. Yep. So I just want to be clear that I was supporting the project and just, it's, um, we do construction, I mean, facilities. Sometimes you have to account for possible mitigation measures and was just asking whether if there was a problem, if there was any recourse. So I'm not trying to derail it. Um, I, did, I did not know the neighborhood had decided um, there was not going to be a sound study, so I thought things were going to be addressed. So. Um, I don't know. How, I, I don't feel like we need to put a wall now. I don't know that there's a problem. I'm just wondering if there's any recourse. You know, that's all. So that was the question. The other is just curious. Um, because it's state-owned land that the railroad tracks are on, and they're in a butter. Just any curious, any information about the state's position on this? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. I did look for the letter. Um, is there a letter from the railroad? Yes. Sorry, yes. Sorry, yeah. There certainly is a letter yeah. from the railroad. So yes, the railroad has has weighed in and said that they they want this there. So. No, the Department of Tra the Executive Office of Transportation. Oh. That own actually owns the land. Oh, there as an abutter. I was just curious. Well, they would have gotten They're a certified letter, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I can't read the signature on this one that went to Ten Park Plaza. Do you know who signed for it? Not the particular person, but that's what he's saying. That's the, yeah, exactly. Right, Ten Park Plaza is a 12-story building. It's basically a DOT. Where all that Mass DOT is coming. Yeah. So South Mass South. DOT owns the parcel. Yeah. Pan Am Railways has a 100-year lease on the parcel. They're probably in maybe 30 years, 30 years into the lease. So they're leasing the parcel right now. So they're the leaseholder. But the Commonwealth of Massachusetts owns the property. Yeah, I was just curious as an abutter. I just yeah. didn't know if there was any letters of support or anything. It was just a curiosity. I don't know if they know. So the letter was from Pan Am. Correct. Not from Mass. Correct. 
Just to, just to clarify, the parcel that we're building on, there's technically two parcels. As you can see, we kind of hug. The whole grassy area mm -hmm. is owned by Pan Am, even to the north of the railroad corridor. The railroad tracks themselves is what's owned by Mass DOT, mm -hmm. which, is, which we're not touching. So that's, that's the least. I just wanted to clarify. So they're in a butter. And that's what so they're yes, 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 they are in a butter. They are in a butter. Yeah. So I just wanted to just uh, mm -hmm. So thank you, Lynn. And I'd like to say thank you to Lynn Rose for all the work she's done at the railroad. Uh, she's been really watching the cleanup and everything else. And that kind of was an issue that we wondered if that was going to play. This obviously, this project has nothing sort of to do with that, I think. But that, that, that will be. Yeah, so we that appreciate be part of the project. Appreciate that, Lynn. Um, right. Yeah. Um, all right, and, and again, this, um, uh, the CONCOM, um, you already worked with them and they gave the approval. There is wetlands and you're staying away from that. We shared their engineering review mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and that was, it was a previous meeting when they felt like all the stormwater issues are taken care of a, as well. So, any other questions? Any, anybody else, the public? So normally what we do is when there's no more comments, we have all the information, we close the public hearing. Seeing no more. John, yeah, before you do close the public hearing, I, I just want to be sure because this, um, even though you've got your variants, this technically is against um, our bylaws. And I just want to be sure from the audience that they are proponents of this. Okay. Which again, uh -huh. that was done by the ZBA. We're not approving. No, no, no. But, but still, yeah. I understand. Yeah. But it's Respectful. they, they, they. Um, yeah. They, they, they gave something the variance. However, the, it's still yeah, yeah, yeah. regulations right. right out of the box. But we can't overrule the ZBA. Right. Think, but right. But they designed right. something that doesn't meet the regulations from the beginning. Right. However, yeah. in any event, they when I I I know Max. I know, but it. it I've never seen a crowd of residents come together and be so supportive of a project. So if one person in that audience said yeah. no, I would, you know, that would weigh my vote one way or the other. And, and again, I think, and, and this is maybe our, this is something we should consider also because um, another big issue, and it was mentioned tonight by a, by a neighbor, is that um, other things are allowed in that zone that potentially could have a bigger negative impact on the neighborhood. And, and so, you know, the fact that we didn't zone this for solar, was that right or wrong? Maybe that's something we, and we are going to revisit the solar bylaws again. Um, but anyway, that I think came into the ZBA's decision as well. So it wasn't, I don't feel like this was all that arbitrary. That's my own opinion. Um, so. And as you remember, the salt plant was proposed about a year or two ago, and that obviously met with a lot of opposition. Um, and that's, that's mentioned in these letters. So, so for what that's worth. And All right. This, this property has stuff that's uh, hazardous, right? Yeah. Yes, this property does have a, a, an RTN, which is a release tracking number. It's going through the MCP process. And I think as we discussed earlier, we will follow the MCP process. We will be filing a, a summer, we'll be filing a RAM plan to deal with any hazardous material gets generated. So we'll be in full compliance with state and federal environmental laws. Well, did you get that people who spoke from the public's name? Should they sign that book? Uh, yeah, let's have them sign it. it it's not a, it's I, I, the, it's a public hearing, so we, we need to know who spoke. Yeah, so get that signed, yeah. Uh, sign the bottom of that page after. All right, hearing no more comments. Um, I move that we close the hearing. Motion to the hearing. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Who, who made the motion? I'm sorry. Rachel. 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 Kip seconded. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Oppose? Abstain? So that's 6 0, six zero, zero. zero. To close the public hearing. Um, we do not have a draft decision letter written up, but we do have a um, a good template for one because of the other solar array we just did. Yes. So um, I, I guess I wanted to ask if that's something that um, if we if we make a decision tonight and put it in the minutes, vote on it, and then over the next week or two we we get the decision drafted up, pass it around. I can then sign that um, 
and that's often what we what we've done in the past actually um, and actually I just want to double check um, stormwater this is also um, stormwater is also required and so that's part of this decision too in the past um, sometimes we bundle our decisions together it's been advised by our attorney that we should do uh, different decisions for site plan stormwater um, and special permit if required so I would I would ask that if we do a, do a decision here we do the two separate ones the site plan and the stormwater um, so I move to approve the site plan review for the sol uh, solar thing at 100 railroad yards second and I would just say that it's based on the plans of January 8th that we received on these aren't the revised ones. What's the date on your revised plan? Should be January 8th. That's what I'm going with because it came with the final. Because so. that was our CBA. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. So that's part of the motion. January 8th. There's a motion to approve the site plan review uh, according to the plans uh, submitted January 8th. And seconded. Are you? Yep. I seconded. seconded by Rachel. Any discussion? Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? One abstain. Uh, you, um, you, you've been at all the meetings, is that? So this is not for that reason? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do you want to give a reason? or? They brought something to the board. That I can't required. Hear reason, please. They brought something to the board that required that was outside of what was allowed, and they assumed they were going to get a variance. They brought the southern field in, and okay, and then then they added the northern field, and I, I just don't agree with how they right. so do five, business. Five zero one. Good. Mm -hmm. And um, stormwater uh, review. I don't know what the date is, but I move to approve no. the stormwater plan for the no. same project. Yeah, it's in the same. Yeah. It's not. Same. It's in this one too. And they have operations, maintenance plans, things. That should be January eighth as well. Yep. Yeah. Do we have a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the stormwater management plan? Um, aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? One. Five zero one. So we will we will uh, <coughs> draft official decisions, um, get it on letterhead and everything, and, and get that out to you. Is there something you need more quickly or? Um, <laughs> I know there was, I know part of the reason why we had the hearing was there something going on at the state or something. Yes, no, 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 no. Thank you again for uh, scheduling a special hearing. Um, I mean, yeah, we um, we'll be notifying EverSource that, like I said, we we receive our permits um, with the Smart Program, as I mentioned, for application. Um, it's kind of a first come first serve basis. So I mean, of course, the sooner the better. But we understand everything you've done for us. So okay. thank you again. But um, right. so that's fine. And I think your vote basically codifies what you need for the state anyhow. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So it's just actually submitting the actual written decision um, upload to us. And, um, and again, that's based on paying the uh, direct fees. So yes. um, yep. we'll finalize that over the next couple of weeks. We don't Cut. release decisions without <laughs> okay. fees being collected. Sure. Hey, I ask one more question. Yes, thank, sir. thank you again. Um, so with the Conservation Commission, we did the register of deeds, the order. At the ZBA, um, I think Pat Kroll did it. Um, when the order is ultimately given, do you need us to do it, or is that something somebody at the planning board decision? You mean? Yes. City Who clerk. gets it recorded? City clerk. I saw Diana here. I believe it's you. Okay. We'll take care of that. Great. Okay. Yeah. 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 Upon payment of the fees. <laughs> Upon payment of fees. Let me Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. So the only other issue uh, or the other agenda item is that um, I don't have my email. I sent this out on email. So back in um, on November 
19th, we voted to approve a site plan and special permit for a solar, the Frontier Solar off of Setright Road. Apparently, I think the site plan review is fine, but special permits require a supermajority of the board. Yeah. At that meeting, we only had five people, and it was a, it's a four to, four to it was one abstention. Four in favor, one opposed, one abstention. So four is not a super. It's a majority of the seven, but it's it's not a super. There wasn't one opposed. There was one abstain. abstain. But it's apparently our attorneys say the five in favor. So do we revote tonight? Um, so if we could revote, and just to make sure. Um, people who vote were at the right meetings. Max actually submitted something tonight because he wasn't at the November 19th meeting, but he did uh, watch it on video, so by the Mullins rule or whatever, is able to participate. Um, and so I think, uh, so I can, Rachel can, Paul can, Max can now, John did then, so I guess he can, Kips, Roger, so we can all participate in that. And then if we, uh, if we do it, then we can sign all the documents tonight, too, which is uh, one of the last acts that Pat Smith did for us. <laughs> okay. um, so I move that we uh, uh, grant a special permit. Um, we've combined the special permit and the site plan. I, I move that we grant a special permit and site plan of approval to allow the application of the old Frontier Solar 3 LLC hexagon energy for development of a large-scale ground-mounted solar electric on 9.95 acres off of Setright Road. I'll second the motion. So John, you moved it. John Waite moved it, and Kip seconded it. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? 600. Zero, zero. Six, zero. Did you, whatever you read right there, John, could I have a copy of that? Yep. Okay. Okay. So I do actually will have to. Uh... John, would you like me to look through the mail real quick? Yeah. Or not, it's up to you. Well, it's 545 in case yeah, somebody I has to run leave. Out. No, what, one more, I got to do the stormwater. So, um, well, this one I feel like we already did. Stormwater was approved. Um, Four zero one, so we could. So this one we can just sign. Okay. So no other. And I, I'm going to have to uh, redo that voting page, but otherwise everything's fine. So we can, if we can sign it, and then we'll just redo that. Okay. Uh, so this, there's, a, there's a special place for vice chair and clerk, and otherwise we'll just sign next to member. Any other business? And our next meeting is scheduled already for the first uh, Monday in February, right? Yes. I don't have my calendar. What's that? You want to find out? First meeting in February. For the date in February for the meeting? Fourth. Fourth. February 4th. And we have, um, uh, it's also going to involve a public hearing for uh, 10 Greenfield Road marijuana. And I think I sent around the uh, Oh, the attachment for our bylaws, but a good, good thing for all yes. of us to review again yes. because we have, uh, you know, one or two coming up, so yeah. that would be good. Is that going to be at 7 o'clock? On the 4th. I already had that down here for some reason. Yeah, yeah we, we, we already, already yeah. planned it. Okay, all right, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Now, the next meeting is February 4th at 7 o'clock. So we need to sign, but can we adjourn? Yeah, because we already voted. I move that we adjourn. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I have to run.